Good morning everybody. This is Lisa and we're going to be celebrating my daughter's birthday this weekend and on Monday. That's the day. Uh, happy birthday, Christina. Uh, also, uh, I just want to take the time to make a quick little video about some of the um, some of the chemicals that come up in personal care items. My uh, blog, which has changed names, it was uh, Lisa's Natural Soap Creations, and then I changed it to Lisa's Natural Beauty Bars dot blogspot dot com. And of course, it may change again, but in any case, that's just a place where I hold information and links. And on that blog, I've kept it to the happy information about soaps and their ingredients, all natural soaps. There are some ingredients that are not considered natural, such as fragrances, even though they're phthalate-free. Fragrances contain about 14 to 15 chemicals, and there isn't enough research to really know how they're going to affect humans and some of the natural soap makers do not like the presence of any fragrances in a soap however customers do like fragrances and uh, I use one in particular which is an Irish tweed fragrance it's a sort of like a men's perfume and um, I'm using some others too such as uh, a cherry bomb flavor and I have a bamboo hemp and I have a cannabis flower um, the way you can think about fragrances is sort of like lab created gems. You have gems that appear in nature and they have certain, you know, properties, I guess they're chemicals. And with fragrances, the ones that uh, occur in nature are called essential oils and the lab created fragrance is a fragrance oil that's created by chemicals. All right, I'm not so sure they're terrible, but this is what I do in my soaps pretty much. Um, I don't use a great deal of fragrance oils. If I do use a fragrance oil, I combine it with an essential oil. So if the recipe says you can use two ounces of fragrance oil, chances are I will be using one ounce plus essential oils. Or if it requires one ounce of fragrance oil, I will be using possibly a half an ounce and then the remainder will be essential oils like with the Irish bars I use the Irish tweed at half the amount and then the rest is peppermint and eucalyptus and I think that's not a bad deal and of course if my sense uh, customers become sensitive to it then I will not use it whatever they need okay um, I personally like soaps made with essential oils. Um, I am very sensitive. Okay, some other things to watch out with in personal care items is aluminum in products containing baking soda, which would be bath bombs. So if you are going to buy a bath bomb uh, and it doesn't say a, made with aluminum free baking soda or sodium bicarbonate, then I would question that. I would call the uh, customer service or I would just not buy it, okay? All right, aluminum is not good for your health. Um, another thing to avoid is polysorbate 20, 60, and 80. I'm not sure exactly what it does to the body, but apparently it's not good for the environment. Another thing to watch out for is an acronym, and it's EDTA. Not good for the environment. Not good for marine life, okay? All right, I spent a lot of time listening to doctors and reading articles, and I spent a lot of time, it was very tedious listening to all this. I call it my scientific ganyo because I'm a Buddhist, and ganyo is the assiduous practice of reciting prayers that's combined with three different languages. So um, that would be Chinese, Japanese, and Sanskrit. So therefore, I'm accustomed to details. And, you know, anyone can learn it, but not everyone can recite it. That's what they say in Buddhism. Uh, but anyway, let's go back to the science. Okay, so there are chemicals 
uh, that you find in ingredient listings and the best way to determine if an ingredient is um, is natural or is a low hazard or a medium hazard or a high hazard is to go to a website called the EWG.org. Uh, that stands for Environmental Working Group.org. They have a skin deep database. You can go in there, you can either search for products, you can search for companies, or you could search for the ingredient. Some ingredients have a uh, long, well, they do. The government expects us to list the ingredients in their Latin names, which makes it confusing. So we'll list it in Latin, and then in parentheses we'll list it in the common name, such as coconut oil or olive oil. I think olive oil is Europea oleate, something like that. Um, I'm not too well versed in my Latin names, but in any case, the EWG Working Group Skin Deep Database has a great deal of information and I would use that as the best resource. I have seen another database through the US government and that database, um, I don't think it admits to the truth of everything because I personally know and have researched ingredients and I go to the government database and <coughs> it does not admit that certain things are harmful can't think of them off offhand but in any case the best products on the market have things in them that are probably not the best for your health I'm just talking about even nature's gate conditioners have preservatives they have the polysorbate they have EDTA in them uh, the lush products has all that in them uh, why on earth do we need all these preservatives okay so I don't know because supposedly with soap you really don't need a preservative. I guess unless they're planning on having the soap sit on the shelf for like five years, you know. Because with the case of Lush, I just analyzed it, they use mostly coconut oil which has two, a two year shelf life. And they do use some rapeseed oil which has a shorter shelf life. Uh, maybe the preservative is put in there so they can use rapeseed oil is basically canola. Alright, so all you fans of Lush out there, just know that coconut oil is cheap and rapeseed oil is cheap and they're harsh as well. Um, the rapeseed oil makes it a little less harsh, but um, it doesn't have a very long shelf life, so then you have to have a preservative come in. Alright, so you want to know why mine are better? Because I use a nice combination of olive oil, coconut oil, castor oil, and those are just the base oils. The premium oils on top of that are usually mango butter, hemp seed oil, and avocado oil. They're all, you know, a little bit more expensive and they are gorgeous on your skin. Alright. So anyway, let's see now. What else can I tell you about toxins, etc.? Hmm. Well, you want to make sure that like when you get herbs, that you do get organic herbs into products. And if it doesn't say organic on labels, then, um, then either they can't prove it or it's a legality or something. But I think most of us know that some of the supplements on the market um, apparently China is excellent for producing herbs and uh, medicinal supplements but the only problem is China their um, products might be contaminated with some heavy metals or some kind of toxins so I don't know what to tell you about that okay I have heard that China is a great place to get herbs and they have a great variety but anyway, have a nice weekend. Cheers. Bye.